Hey guys, today I'm gonna teach you guys how to do five very easy freestyle tricks on a skateboard, in case you thought I was talking about soccer or something. I've been getting a ton of requests to do more freestyle skateboarding videos, and I love freestyle skateboarding, so I will do that. I thought it'd be really cool, though, to teach you guys how to do uh, these five basic tricks. Even if you're a beginner skateboarder, I really do think you could do this if you just practice a lot, like anything in skateboarding. And I actually don't have my freestyle board with me. I left it at Shred Quarters, but you don't necessarily need a freestyle board to do these tricks. I'm not using a freestyle board today, so don't let that discourage you. However, I do want to shout out Walt Skateboards. They make uh, amazing freestyle skateboarders. Skateboarders? Skateboards. They make skateboards, not humans. And it really does make freestyle tricks way easier. Uh, so yeah, shout out to Waltz skateboards. I just want to mention that I am not like a professional freestyler in the slightest. I am a beginner myself. I do know like a couple basic things, which is why I thought it'd be perfect for me to make this video. Because if I can do it, honestly, I know you can do it too. It's it's not that bad. But without further ado, I'm going to I'm gonna teach you how to, how to skateboard. So the first trick is actually uh, kind of two tricks in one because there's two ways to get into it. Actually, there's a million ways to get into it, but I'm going to teach you like the two most basic ways uh, that you'll see someone get into a rail stand. That's the name of the trick. So if you guys don't know what a rail stand is, uh, you might know it as the word Primo, that's what I called it for years, and then I was corrected by everyone. But a rail stand is when you apply pressure uh, on the back of the board right here, and you flip it up and you stand on the side of the skateboard. Which to beginner skateboarders, that may seem like the hardest thing of all time, but it's really not that bad if you just practice. That's the key to this video, by the way, is just practicing, believe it or not. Practice comes a long way. I put my, my back foot right underneath the bolts right here, and I put my front foot uh, hanging over the wheel right here, okay? So back foot here, front foot here. You're gonna apply pressure with your back foot to tilt the board and you're going to catch it with your front foot as soon as it gets on its side and you're gonna kind of just step up with the front foot, step up with the back foot. It's kind of like a one-two motion, like you step, 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 so one, two, three. And then once you're on the side of the board, there's a million possibilities. We're gonna get into a couple of those, but that's really the first trick. You just kind of tilt it forward to land it. That's it. The other way to get into it is a little uh, weirder, but it's actually kind of easier for a lot of people. You start with your back foot, pressing the board down. You put your front foot right here, and you kind of like shove it in. I'm gonna hit the camera. With your front foot, you kind of bring it around, and you just step up again, just how you did in the previous version. So I'm gonna show you both of those, what they look like. All right, this is the first version that I was talking about. Boom. Landed. And the second version probably sounded weird, but it's really not that difficult once you just look at it. That's it. Your back foot really does kind of like remain on the ground for a split second, at least when I do it. I, if you're a pro, maybe you don't, but that's that's how I do it. So once you have that trick down, you can actually morph that into other possibilities to exit the trick. That didn't make any sense. You can flip out of it, that's what I'm saying. So the next, the number two trick is uh, just do a little kick flip out or rail flip, whatever it's called. So with this one, uh, once you're already in the rail, you already know how to do this part, all you're going to do is put your back foot right here on the tail, not right here, right here. So you're gonna kinda maneuver it this way. And you're just gonna apply a little bit of pressure. You really don't have to apply much pressure at all. And you just press down. You do literally nothing with the front foot other than get it out of the way. You just jump and it will naturally flip the board when you kinda do this with your toes. So that's what I imagine. I literally imagine my toes going like that. And it will kick flip, hopefully a little bit off the ground, and you'll land on it. It might take a little bit of practice just getting one flip. In fact, for me, I think it's actually way easier to do a double flip out of it. But it's really whatever you're comfortable with, whatever you kind of learn. Uh, try both. Try try numerous variations. In fact, I'm going to get into that in a second. But this is what it looks like. So get into rail. Oh my gosh. Hopefully a little smoother than I just did. And then you just kick flip out. You really apply like the smallest amount of pressure ever uh, to do that. I'm rolling. The third trick I'm going to teach you is, once again, just another variation of getting out of rail. By the way, I'm not saying these are the tricks like you should learn in order. Um, these are honestly like the tricks I know how to do as a person that doesn't know a lot about freestyle skateboarding. Like there's other cool stuff like actually maneuvering around your board, like I, I forgot what it's called. It's like where you're like walking with your skateboard basically. Yeah, but we're, I'm not going into that because I suck at it. But anyway, third trick, rail double flip. It's exactly what you just learned, except this time you're going to do the exact same thing with more pressure, okay? so it's not the exact same thing at all. To learn the kickflip out, you just did a little bit of pressure and it did one flip. This time you're going to do more pressure, okay? Twice as much, in fact, because it's double. And mine actually do a varial double flip. I don't know if that's gonna happen to you guys, but that's that's how I learned it. So really you're doing a rail stand varial double flip. You're just gonna have your foot in the same spot. The farther you move it back this way, I feel like the more it flips. Could be wrong, but for me that works. You just do a lot of pressure right here and more toe power and shove it. That's the kind of the key for the varial part is you kind of shove your foot this way. This foot does nothing once again, just gets out of the way. You jump, and it should varial double flip 
to there. In fact, you can do varial triple flip, varial quadruple flip. The more pressure you have, the more it's gonna flip. So uh, th this whole thing really is just getting a feel for how much pressure to put on the back foot. How, how many times have I said pressure this video? Anyway, I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like. Smoother rail stand this time. Oh, kind of, okay. You just move your foot right here and press down, balance, unlike me, and... Oh! That was so bad. That was the exact same badness. like that. So that one's not too bad. You just have to press down harder and uh, kind of figure out how hard to press down by trial and error. For me, that's all freestyling is, is trial and error. So you got this, man or girl. Fourth trick uh, has nothing to do with a rail stand, believe it or not. This is the only like non-rail stand trick I know how to do. But it's called a Casper stall and it's really not that bad. But it does help if you know how to kickflip. Uh, if you don't know how to kickflip, you can still do it, I promise. But if you already have kickflips down, it will be a little bit easier because you already have the flick motion. And there's actually two ways to do this trick. I am good at the kickflip version and and I'm not good at what's supposed to be the easier version, but I'll, I'll show you both. So the kickflip version, the, the way that I like to do it, is you just pop half of a kickflip, and when you do it, you leave your foot under the board, your front foot. So you don't really like flick out all the way. You kind of like flick and let the board roll on top of your foot. And then you put your back foot on the tail of the board. It does help if you have grip tape right here, like what a freestyle board does, has. I do not have grip tape right here, so your foot might slip off a little bit, which is a little frustrating if, uh, if you don't have a freestyle board. But anyway, you stall it like this, and then you just literally shove it and land it. That's all you do. The uh, The second part is the, is the easiest, in my opinion. And you can actually practice that just by setting the board like this, putting your front foot under, putting your back foot here, and then just leaning back, and then practice to shove it out. You don't even have to know the first part. Uh, my only tip with the kickflip thing is uh, maybe have your front foot farther up in kickflip position than you normally would for a normal kickflip. That way, it kind of stops on the nose of the board maybe. That's how I do it. I don't know if that tip helps you if it's like over flipping, so maybe just move your front foot up. The second way to do this, which is supposed to be the easier way, but for me it's harder, is you have your foot about right here, your front foot. Have your back foot kind of hanging over the tail right here so it's easy to step into Casper position. But basically with your front foot you apply pressure right here, and at the same time with your back foot you're kind of flipping the board with like ball of your foot, I guess? Kind of your toes, you kind of curl your toes over it. And it goes into Casper, you stall it, and you get out out of it the exact same way. So I'm gonna do both of those for you. The kickflip version is easier for me usually. I'm burping. Oh, and something that will happen with this trick is your back foot will get like half on the tail and half on the ground. You can be the judge if you wanna count that or not. I like to have it up here. Rarely does that happen. I guess for it to like fully be a Casper, your foot should be on the tail, but whatever, man. All right, here's the kickflip version. Gosh, I did it. I touched the wall, don't care. And then here's the non kickflip version. Oh, that was easier. That was a car horn. I forgot how fun Caspers are. That's probably my favorite one on this list. And the last trick I'm gonna teach you guys is actually a little more advanced, but I know you guys can do it if you have the rail stand rail stand? Rail stand flip and rail stand double flip down. That's what I meant to say. This one, you're going to get into rail and you're going to flip or double flip. I think double flip's way easier, so you can do either one. So either a flip back into rail or a double flip back into rail. And I'm weird. I think the double flip is easier. I think I'm just a weirdo, but do whichever one you think. The same rules apply. All you're going to do for this, and I know it sounds really self-explanatory, you're going to do like trial and error until you figure out how hard you need to press down here. So if you got used to the double flip like me, you know how hard to press down for the double flip. All you're going to do is press down slightly less. I know that sounds so stupid, but if you're pressing down at a certain strength, imagine that strength, but down just a little bit, okay? You're probably gonna land on the board like this a lot, and you're probably just gonna accidentally land the trick a lot. I swear this is just trial and error, and it's not as bad as it seems. Like a lot of, it, this looks like a really hard trick. If you just keep on practicing and you keep on thinking to press down just slightly less, it is not that bad. But yeah, I'm gonna show you. So rail stand, perfect. Then just flip a little less than usual. That's probably gonna happen a lot. Oh. Oh, it always surprises me every time I get in it. If you're feeling feisty, you can flip or double flip out. I'm gonna try it. Boom. That's how we do it. When you guys land that, you're probably gonna be like me and you didn't even know you just landed back in it. I've done that trick like a hundred times and every single time I get in it, it surprises me that I got in it. Also, another tip for that trick that I have is if it's flipping too much, use your muscle memory for the attempt you just did and flip a little less than that. And then if it flips a little less, just do a little more than that. It really is like balancing between the flips. 
Okay, guys, uh, that is my five freestyle tricks that I know you can learn. Someone I want to shout out real quick is Mike Osterman. He is a professional freestyle skateboarder, and he's actually taught me a lot of stuff. So uh, check out his channel. The card is right here. Tell him I sent you. He has freestyle tutorials, and he actually like completely knows what he's talking about. So uh, yeah, definitely check out his channel. Uh, he's one of the owners of Walt Skateboards, Daniel Trujillo being the other owner, and he's fantastic. Your mind will be blown. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a comment below. Uh, ask a question if you need. I, I will try to give my best advice. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and click the notification bell to never miss an upload. I put out videos Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays, so uh, check it out. And also check out my gaming channel. I have a card right here for my gaming channel. Two uploads a week on that one, and uh, it's freaking fun and funny, so check it out. And that is all I have to say, guys. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna do a huge kickflip into this grass. Ow, that hurt, why did that hurt? Check this out. Oh.